Today I'm going to talk about wands. They're one of the most important tools that a witch can use. But what are they exactly and how can you use them to enhance the magic in your life? Most importantly, how do you find the right one? Well, to paraphrase J.K. Rowling, the author, you don't. The right wand finds you. I brought my three wands with me today. Two of them are made from wood, which it's traditional to make wands from wood. And the traditional length is from the tip of your index finger to the crook of your elbow, which these aren't quite that long. My copper one is that long because you can make wands from metal as well. Metal and wood are the best materials to make wands out of. Crystal is good too as long as it's you know, a natural material and not something that was created in a laboratory and certainly not plastic. Plastic doesn't work when you're working with magic tools. So we're going to talk about these two first, which are made from oak. I'm standing in front of an oak tree that's 125 years old here in Regal Park, Sebastopol. So I thought that was appropriate. If you make a wand from wood, be sure that it's from a fallen branch or twig and not from wood that's cut from the tree. Uh, that's just bad energy to cut from a tree and you don't want that because then not only will your wand not work, but it could backfire. So you don't wanna do that. The three best woods, in my opinion, to make a wand from are the oak, the ash, and the hawthorn. These three trees are known as the fairy trinity of trees because the fairies favor them. Fairies like all trees, but those three are very powerful. The oak tree is, uh, it's a very strong protective tree. It's connected to the Celtic goddess of inspiration, Bridget, and the oak king in the Wiccan religion. When you make a wand from oak, it will protect protects you and it will give you strength and vitality, also prosperity. If you make a wand from the ash tree, as another example, it can help connect you to the Norse gods, Odin and Thor. And it's a very good wood to use when you want to increase your intuitive abilities. The hawthorn is linked to the fairy realm as well. And the Welsh goddess, Olwen, who is the goddess of flowers and the arts. So if you're working with flowers, beauty, or anything artistic, it's good to have a wand that's made from hawthorn. Um, those are just my three favorites. So one of the ways you can find a stick or twig to make into a wand is as you walk around, and you look, you look down, if you see one that you like and it appeals to you, pick it up, see if it's about the right length, if it feels good in your hand, and if it does, your wand has found you. If you choose to use a wand made out of metal, like this copper one, you can find them in New Age stores and magic stores. I happen to find this one in Crystal Channels in Santa Rosa, California. Copper is a very good metal to use when you're working with love. So if you wanted to cast a love spell, you could use a wand made of copper. So now I'd like to talk about the three C's, cleanse, charge, and consecrate. These are the things that you should do to your wand before you use it in spells. It's very important that you cleanse it of any negative energies that might be clinging to it. One of the best ways to do that is to leave it in the sunlight for an hour or two, however long you think is necessary. That's about what I do. Or you can also leave it in the moonlight to cleanse it of negative energies. Then you wanna charge it with your own personal energy. And my favorite way to do that is to carry it with me uh, some of these are small enough to fit in my purse, so I carry my purse with me at all times. You can carry it with you in your car, uh, across your lap, or next to you. You can also sleep with it under your pillow, but if you do that, you may get some strange dreams. So just heads up if you decide to do that. And then you can consecrate it. There are several ways to do this. One of it, 
one of the ways is with the power of the elements. So if you wanted to at first consecrate it with, by, with the earth element, this is giving it power of the earth, you could sprinkle salt on it or a little bit of dirt um, and that, and you can just then just wipe it off after a moment or two. And for water, of course, a couple drops of water. For air, one of the ways to consecrate it with air is to hold it over incense smoke. And then for fire, hold it above a candle flame, but make sure you don't burn it. So just hold it right above it. Another way to do that is to use uh, body parts, which correspond to the elements. If you would like to do that, that makes it a little bit more personal. Uh, the earth, for earth, the parts of the body that correspond to earth would be fingernails and a strand of hair. So you could use one of those and put those on your wand. Um, for water, it could be a tear or a drop of uh, sweat or um, a little bit of saliva. I'm not suggesting you spit on your wand, but you can certainly take some out of your mouth and then touch it like that. That's what I prefer to do. Uh, for air, you would blow on it. Now, what's interesting is the body part that corresponds to fire is blood. So some witches consecrate their tools with a, a small drop of blood, which you could do should you feel so inclined. I don't usually do that, but it's an option. And then a very powerful way to consecrate your wand is to infuse it with the energies of the 12 astrological signs. So the, one of the ways you could do that is to put your wands flat on your hand or on a flat surface and hold your hand over it. And then you would say, uh, blessed be by the power of all beginnings. That's for Aries. For Taurus, you would say, blessed be by the power of all that is valued. For Gemini, blessed be by the power of all that is spoken. For Cancer, blessed be by the power of kin and tribe. For Leo, blessed be by the power of all that rules. For Virgo, blessed be by the power of all that labors. For Libra, blessed be by the power of all that bonds together. For Scorpio, that's, that's me, blessed be by the power of all that desires. For Sagittarius, blessed be by the power of all insight. For Capricorn, blessed be by the power of all aspiration. For Aquarius, blessed be by the power of all inspiration. And finally for Pisces, blessed be by the power of all that believes. When you do this, the power, the unique powers of each sign will be absorbed by your wand or wands in this case, since I have three. So those are just some of the ways you can do that. Those uh, blessings, by the way, are from a book called Pagan Astrology by Raven Caldera. So how do wands work and why are they so powerful? Well, their shape and composition make them the ideal magical tools to direct energy or to communicate, as in a writer's pencil or a teacher's pointer or a conductor's baton. They're tools of the air element, not the fire element. You'll often see that error in books about magic and books about Wicca and books about magical tools, uh, but that's not the case. They're tools of the air element. They correspond to the suit of clubs in playing cards and the suit of wands in tarot or rods sometimes in tarot. Um, swords are of the fire element. So anyway, they're, they help you communicate. Whenever you're carrying or using your wand, it will help you whether you're speaking publicly or writing or doing anything where communicative skills are important. They'll also protect you if you're traveling by air. So it's good to have one when you're flying anywhere. So they're very important tools. Remember to be respectful of your wand and the power that it helps you direct. Once you've cleansed and charged and consecrated it, it's now ready to use in spells. Remember, as long as it harms none, do what ye will. Until next time, blessed be.